Hour and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The Senate is expected to vote on a controversial measure to amend the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act for FISA tomorrow. The legislation would rewrite the nation's surveillance laws and authorize the National Security Agency secret program of warrantless wiretapping. It gives the government new powers to eavesdrop on both domestic and international communications and could also grant immunity to phone companies involved in President Bush's secret domestic spy program. The Democratic-controlled House approved its version of the bill late last month. Wisconsin Senator Russ Feingold, speaking on Democracy Now!, called the measure, quote, one of the greatest intrusions potentially on the rights of Americans protected under the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution in the history of our country. I'm joined right now by a man who blew the whistle on the involvement of phone companies in the Bush administration's domestic surveillance program. Mark Klein was a technician with AT&T for 22 years, and uh, in 2006, he leaked internal AT&T documents that revealed the company had set up a secret room in its San Francisco office to give the National Security Agency access to its fiber optic internet cables. He testified before Congress last November to urge lawmakers not to give AT&T and other telecom companies immunity. Mark Klein is also a witness in a lawsuit filed by the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which alleges AT&T illegally gave the National Security Agency access to its networks. Mark Klein joins us now from San Francisco, California. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you. Good morning, Amy. It's very good to have you with us. Uh, this is highly controversial, the vote that is expected to take place tomorrow, especially Senator Obama's role in it. But let's go back to the beginning, Mark Klein. Talk about how you found out about AT&T spying on Americans. Right. I, I first should add a correction. Congress never invited me to testify, although I did go to Washington to lobby. But no committee has ever invited me to testify, which says something about Congress. But going back to 2002, we were told one day in late 2002 that an NSA representative was coming to the office to speak to a certain management technician about a special job. And this turned out to be installing a secret room in the next office I was going to be in the following year. And that secret room involved a lot of spying equipment. Only this one management technician could go in there, and the regular union technicians were not allowed to go in there. But uh, when in 2003, I was assigned to that office, and I got hold of the documents, which were available, they're not classified. And the documents showed what they were doing. They were basically copying the entire data stream going across critical internet cables and copying the entire data stream to this secret room. So the NSA was getting everything. And, and what uh, was the response when you started to talk about this? Well, while I was still working at AT&T, I didn't say anything because I wanted to keep my job. And it was a scary atmosphere back then, you may remember. But I sat on it and took some mental notes. And after the, I retired in 2004, and the end of 2005, when the New York Times came out with their expose that there was wi warrantless wiretapping going on, then I came forward in early 2006, and I tried to present my documents to some media groups and, and to some civil liberties groups, including the Electronic Frontier Foundation. And uh, I became a witness in EFF's lawsuit against AT&T. Mark, eventually, go ahead. Yeah, and eventually the media came onto the story. The New York Times came out with a story in uh, April 2006. Mm. Can you talk about the Democratic leadership and Senator Barack Obama, the presumptive Democratic presidential uh, nominee, of course, of the Democratic Party, uh, calling the bill that's going to be voted on a compromise? Well, the Democratic Party and the Congress in general has been unfriendly to me for the last two years of my efforts. As I say, I've been trying to bring my information forward for about two years now, even after the c Congress went Democratic, 
um, they turned their back on me, except for a couple of individuals, like Senator Dodd was friendly, and a couple of congressmen. Um, no committee of Congress would invite me to testify. It's never happened. Uh, my attorney sent letters, which were never answered, and they never and they voted not to investigate. So it's been clear for some time that Congress wants to help the president cover this up, and they were just looking for a way to do it. And so now they have a bill that claims to get some kind of concessions. In fact, they got no concessions. This bill would give immunity to the phone companies, and thus would kill any hope of finding out what happened by the lawsuits against AT&T and the other companies. And so Congress is intervening against the judicial process to kill the lawsuits and essentially protect the president. And it's kind of ironic because you may know the FISA law itself originated when the Democratic Party in Congress discovered that Nixon was trying to spy on Democratic National Committee headquarters in the 70s. And they passed this law to require that any domestic spying must go, must be approved by a secret court, the FISA court. And now the Democratic Party is helping to basically destroy this law. If this bill passes, the law will become a toothless dead letter, as far as I can tell. Um, the message that will go out is that on paper, he, the president is not supposed to do this, but everybody knows the president violated the law over and over, and now he's going to get away with it. That's the message if they pass this law. And you can get away with it. We're not going to enforce this law. I recently interviewed Democratic Senator Russ Feingold of Wisconsin. He's been leading the congressional voice. The, he's the leading congressional voice against the Bush administration's warrantless spy program since it was exposed. I asked him what role telecommunications companies um, had in rewriting the FISA bill. Well, they clearly wanted this immunity. Uh, they they think they should be let off the hook, regardless of what the current. Uh, laws require. Uh, I think, and many of my allies on this think, that the court should decide it based on the law. Uh, sadly, the administration has been very behind the telephone company's desire to have this immunity, maybe even leading the charge, because there's an additional benefit to them if this immunity goes through. It may block our ability to directly challenge in court uh, the violation of the Constitution that the illegal wiretapping uh, program represents. The president takes the position that under Article II of the Constitution, he could ignore the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Uh, we believe that that's absolutely wrong. Uh, I have pointed out that I think it is uh, not only against the law, but I think it's a pretty plain impeachable offense that the president created this program, and yet this immunity provision may have the, the effect not only of giving immunity to the, to the telephone companies, but it may also allow the administration to, to block a legal accountability for this crime, which I believe it is. That was uh, Senator Russ Feingold. Mark Klein, your response. Yes, Senator Feingold and Senator Dodd have been waging a valiant last-ditch effort to stop this thing. The problem they face is that their own party leadership is against them. This latest bill was rammed through the House by Speaker Pelosi, who had said earlier that she was against immunity, but then she suddenly turned and rammed this through. And the same thing is happening now in the Senate. And Senator Obama, who a few months ago, before he was the nominee, uh, explicitly said he would not vote for any bill that had immunity in it. And uh, now, a few days ago, he's reversed his position and said he will vote for this bill. So the Democratic leadership is overriding the fight that Feingold and Dodd are trying to wage. And uh, they're basically carrying out a secret agreement with the White House. Remember, there were never any open hearings on this. They met in secret with the telephone lobbyists and with intelligence agency officials. It was all a secret deal, a conspiracy against the American people. They never had hearings. I was never invited to any hearings. And um, they're going to ram this through. Mark Klein, um, 
Eric Lichtblau wrote a piece in the New York Times uh, on Thursday that says a federal judge in California said Wednesday the wiretapping law established by Congress was the exclusive means for the president to eavesdrop on Americans, and he rejected the government's claim that the president's constitutional authority as commander-in-chief Trump that law. The judge is Vaughn Walker, the chief judge in the Northern District of California. He made his findings in a ruling on a lawsuit brought by an Oregon charity. The group says it has evidence of an illegal wiretap.